Uh, and mm. so when you're looking at that many things, you're like, seen it, seen it, seen it, seen it, seen it. And I think sometimes that's because legitimately it wasn't actually a new idea. It always astounds me when someone submits a new idea and I'm like, there's, there's a TED talk on this. Like, how do you, how do you not know that? I, I did develop originally because I was doing, at the time that I came up with it, I was, I was working, I was the executive producer for TEDx Cambridge, which is one of Ooh. only nine legacy level. TEDx events in the world. Thanks very much. Yeah. And I still work with them. I just, I, I, I retired briefly and then they were like, please come back. Uh, <laughs> and so now I'm the idea strategist. And I like that because I now only do that part. I, I basically, I work with the speakers that the director chooses. So we do everything by invitation and then I work with them. Wait, let me from, pause for, for people who don't yeah. know about TEDx and we should talk more later uh, about the general TEDx, totally. but you said that at TEDx Cambridge, they only do invitation. In other words, many TEDx conferences, in fact, I would argue most these days have an open application Correct. process, but you do yep. not. No, we used to. And then we realized that we didn't really ever follow it. So it's a it's a stat that I mentioned in the book. But after, you know, over the seven, six, seven years that we were actively doing an open application, we only ever took one person from the open application. Uh, and so we just didn't, we just stopped doing it. Um, yeah. it's yeah, we just, what, it just doesn't, let, we only do invite now. Yeah. What? So just, I know we're kind of following a different thread here for a second, but yeah, this fine. is so interesting. What was it about, I, I assume you were getting hundreds of submissions and, and in all those years you're taking one or two, why, why were they just all, you couldn't find a single diamond in the rough or <laughs> like what was happening? No. And that, again, that's part of the inspiration for the, for the book and the approach was yeah. that, so two, two things would happen either, maybe even three. All right. Number one reason that would, somebody would get dismissed out of hand was it was clearly a sales job. Like that, that was just like, it was a thing that they were trying to sell. It was a clearly self-promotional. They were kind of in it for the wrong reasons. And we're like, no, <laughs> that's not what TED's about. Uh, and certainly what not TEDx Cambridge is about. Uh, so anybody who was clearly trying to sell something or sell themselves, self-promotional, self no. The second thing I would see happen was that the the differentness of the idea couldn't wasn't coming through. Uh, and mm -hmm. so when you're looking at that many things, you're like, seen it, seen it, seen it, seen it, seen it. And I think sometimes that's because legitimately it wasn't actually a new idea. It always astounds me when someone submits a new idea and I'm like, there's, there's a Ted talk on this. Like, how do you, how do you not know that? I'm like research people, like take your topic, research it. Um, I just remember somebody submitting an idea as if it were like the newest thing. And I'm like, there is a best-selling New York Times book on this. Like, how do you miss that? Um, but to, and then I to, that, the third, to that third? point, though, to, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. but, the, but to that oh, point, ahead. there's what? Uh, between TEDx and TED, 100,000 talks on YouTube now. Are there are yeah. there any new ideas? I mean, where are all these where are all these talks coming from? If, if... A great point. Uh, and this is part of why I think there's a you know, huge difference in quality in TEDx events, which you know from working with so many people, putting, putting them and you know, getting them there. Um, but it's also part of the reason why we at TEDx Cambridge started to go to invite only because essentially the people that we're inviting are academics and we're, right. we're, they're all the primary researchers. So yeah. they, that's kind of like the last... Yeah. New source, right? Unless you're um so either academics or engineers. I mean, that's that's kind of mm. those are the folks that are still coming up with actually new stuff. Um, but I still think that there's new takes on things. It's just okay. getting harder and harder, I think, to have a distinctively new take on on an idea. Yeah. And so that's I think that's hard. Uh and I think that that makes the work of any of us who do the work of helping people come up with their TEDx idea. Um, that much harder too, because I still hold myself to the standard, even though we do invite only like it, you know, if someone's going to work with me on a TEDx idea, then for me that, that, then it has to, it has to clear a bar where we would have it at TEDx Cambridge. And so sometimes that means that people just aren't ready because that means they need to do a lot more, as I like to call it, they need to have burden of proof that they just don't have. Like they may mm -hmm. have an idea, but they haven't put it out there or, um, to quote the, the, organizer of TEDx Wilmington, Delaware, uh, Ajit George, he, and I still, I love this line. He said, an interesting story does not equal an interesting idea. Mm. 
And I think mm. that's really powerful because I see that happen a lot where people are like, well, everybody tells me I should do a TEDx talk. And I'm like, are these people involved in TEDx in any way? Um, <laughs> that's like when no. someone's funny in social situations, you should be a stand-up, com stand -up comedian. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's not the same thing. No. <laughs> not the same thing. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's very much the case with TEDx. Um, and so that would be some of the reasons why we'd see where someone's like, I've been through this awful thing, or I did this wonderful thing. I'd be like, that's great. But what's the big idea that somebody else who hasn't been through that thing can also take away right. from, from it, not denying that you have a great story or right. whatever. And so typically if I'm talking to people and they do have that, I'm like, listen, it may be, a, it, this could no doubt be a very successful paid keynote, but it's not going to cut it as a TEDx talk. That, I, I'm, so many things you're saying right now. I, I met someone literally just a few hours ago and amazing person, been through incredible stuff, story is unbelievable. And I said, I've seen that TEDx talk 400 times. I said, yeah. your story, while meaningful to you, is not that interesting. I've seen it a million times. Uh, we need yeah. something more than that. Here. Yeah, because anyone who does the kind of work that we do, I mean, we see a lot of ideas and organizers see a huge number of ideas. So yeah. we have a perspective on what's out there that I think a lot of people don't get a sense of. You know, yeah. They're like, here's this new idea. And I'm like, seen it. Yeah. Um, heard of it. Uh, so I think that that all kind of leads to the last big thing that I would see with folks. And that is that they just, and it's it's the written equivalent of, you ask people what the big idea is and you know 20 minutes later you're still not sure because I mean, a lot of times people would give us a title and a title is not an idea right. um they would or they would just kind of like say something and i'm like i don't understand what that is like they're using proprietary language or whatever and it's like mm. i'm sure that is an extremely powerful string of words to you this means nothing to somebody who does not already know what your idea is and it really was a lot of that altogether where I was like, I, I want to help solve this problem because it shows up everywhere. It shows up when you're trying to explain to someone what your business is and you need to get it, you get, need to get investment. It shows up when people pitch kind of anything like to, you know, I have a friend who hosts a podcast and he's like, well, I'm making people tell me why they should be on my podcast in a sentence. And I'm like, good luck, buddy. Um, like that's the whole reason why I wrote a book. <laughs> because most people can't answer that question in a sentence.